Okay, council agenda. Township Precipity Troy Hills. Attending meeting of October 6, 2020. Introduction, posting of notice. Adequate notice of this meeting has been provided in accordance with the requirements of the open public meetings law by filing the notice in the office of the township clerk and by posting the meeting notice on the bulletin board at the municipal building on, on, on December 18th, 2019, where it has remained posted since that date. A legal notice appeared in the daily record in the Newark Star Ledger on December 23rd, 2019 and was forwarded by fax to other local newspapers and local radio stations on December 18th, 2019. Council meetings are videotaped and aired on Cablevision, public access channel 21, and at 11 a.m. on Sundays, and are also available for viewing at Parsippany, www.parsippany.net. At this time, uh, we're going to go to the flag salute. Uh, I'll ask the mayor if you can please lead us to the flag salute. Please rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, at this time, we're going to go ahead and go into the roll call. Uh, Mr. Cariffi? Here. Ms. Grignani? Ms. Grignani? Ms. Grignani? Here. Ms. McCarthy? <coughs> Ms. McCarthy? Here. Ms. Peterson? Here. Mr. DePiro? Here. Uh, also present are Mayor Michael Cignano, uh Business Administrator, uh, Brett Carr, uh, CFO, Juan Ribe, um, Township Attorney Jim Love, Township Clerk Colette Madden. We also have, um, I believe it's uh, Valerie Owen, who's in here from Mr. Baccio. Uh, at this time, Council President, we have a quorum. Uh, may I begin? Praise them. Thank you, Council President. Uh, upcoming meetings uh, October 20th, 2020, at 7 p.m., the regular meeting. November 10th, 2020, at 7 p.m., the agenda meeting. We have the approval of minutes for next meeting, the agenda meeting of September 1st, 2020, and the regular meeting of September 15th, 2020. At this time, we're going into the presentations and reports. Uh, may I turn it over to you? Thank you, Clerk. Um, this month is uh, Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and uh, in spite of the um, all of the uh, breast cancer organizations uh, s actually standing down due to COVID-19 and, and not uh, uh, um, making formal requests for townships to do this this year, we decided to do it anyway uh, in support because this is very important in our township. This has affected so many people here on this meeting. I often recall our former mayor, James Barbario, speaking about his mother, and uh, this was something that was very personal to him. I've had people in my life impacted by this, as well as people in this building that we work with and people sitting on this panel as well that has impacted. So um, with that, I would like to read this proclamation into the record. Proclamation for Best Breast Cancer Awareness Month, October 2020. Whereas October is National Breast Cancer Awareness Month, which is an annual campaign to increase awareness of this disease. And while we have seen an increase in mammography rates and a decline in death, there is more we can do. And whereas National Breast Cancer Awareness Month remains dedicated to increasing public knowledge about the importance of early detection of breast cancer diagnosis and treatment. And whereas too many, too many women do not utilize mammography at regular intervals, even though research indicates it is the best available method. And whereas the awareness campaign is sending out several key messages, most notably the American Cancer Society continues to advise women to get an annual mammogram screening once they reach the age 40. Whereas the National Cancer Institute estimates in the United States this year, 276,000 Americans will be diagnosed with breast cancer and more than 42,000 will likely die from this terrible disease. And whereas in New Jersey, female breast cancer um, accounts for 15.5% of all cancers and 8% of all cancer deaths. 
Now, therefore, I, Michael Soriano, by virtue of the authority vested in me as mayor of the township of Parsippany Troy Hills, do hereby proclaim the month of October as Breast Cancer Awareness Month here in the township of Parsippany Troy Hills and ask our citizens to be aware of the importance of early detection, our best protection, and of the risks of breast cancer. Mr. Clerk, Mr. Council President, that concludes my report. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mayor. You're on mute, Colette. Thank you. Maybe I should follow my own directions. Uh, thank you, Council President. Uh, at this time, we're going over to the Township Council. I'd like to turn it over to you, Council President. Yes, if it pleases the uh, Council and the Mayor, uh, I have two statements I'd like to read for the record. Um, the first involves our utility rate increases, which I've received many phone calls on. I assume many of you have also. The township has not had a water or sewer rate increase in over 10 years. During that time, water and sewer operating expenses have escalated at a rate of 6 to 8%. Additionally, funds ranging from 1.75 million to 3.2 million were transferred annually from the water and sewer funds for use as revenue in the township's municipal budget. A combination of these two actions have drastically reduced the fund balance in both utilities. Although the previous mayor never removed more than what could be replaced by revenue every year, the fund balance was still being reduced by increasing operating expenses. In hindsight, the administration and council should have been increasing the utility rates by two to 4% every year to cover increasing operating expenses. As a councilman for many years, I share in the blame for not recommending to the administration that we annually increase utility rates. The council cannot affect fund balance during our budget reviews. Only the administration can affect fund balance. We can reduce the budget by reducing or eliminating items in the budget with the three council votes, or we can increase the budget with four council votes. This drastic increase in our utility rates at this time, although very unpopular, will restore the fund balances to approximately what the rates would have been if we had been gradually increasing the rates annually. The minimum quarterly charge for all one family residential dwellings with a 5 8 inch meter shall be $38.50 per quarter with a minimum allowance of 10,000 gallons. As the charts show, and I believe we have a chart showing us in comparison with uh, other water and sewer utilities. Coming up. There it is. It's up now, May, uh, Council President. Thank you. As this chart shows, even with this rate increase, the comparison with other utilities in New Jersey, the Parsippany sewer and water rate still compares well with all of them. And that's my statement for the rate increase. Um, I'll let the administration respond to the rest of Venetia's questions, which I have not answered. Okay, one other item. Um, uh, someone named Hattel Desai did not like the fact that I did not have a. Council President, you're muted. Council President, okay, you were muted before. Got it, thank you. Uh, there's been a, a, a mail going around, I think it was published in TAP in the Parsippany by Hattel Desai, criticizing me uh, for not wearing a mask at a Trump rally. The Trump rally was outdoors and I didn't kiss anybody or get too close to anybody, but I was there in a crowd, uh, acknowledged. But indoors is a, a more serious violation and. The governor does not allow any of us indoors to not wear a mask, and I follow that. So my my statement before uh, Ms. Rasai, by the way, I, I could not find her anywhere in the Parsippany voting roll, so I don't know if she even lives in Parsippany. 
But regarding township council meetings, on March 11th, 2020, the World Health Organization declared COVID-19 a pandemic. A pandemic is defined as an epidemic occurring worldwide and affecting a large number of people. The best way to prevent illness is to avoid being exposed to the virus, which is spread mainly from person to person. Shortly after the World Health Organization announcement, Governor Murphy implemented Executive Order Number 104, announcing aggressive social distancing measures to mitigate further spread of COVID-19 in New Jersey. New Jersey basically became came to a standstill. There is still no currently no vaccine to prevent the disease. And for the past six months, restrictions have been rather severe. Those restrictions have been slightly loosened, but not much. As of September, indoor gatherings must be limited to 25 people or 25% of a room's capacity, whichever number is lower. All attendees at indoor gatherings must wear face coverings and stay within six feet apart. Because of the pandemic and the governor's mandate, in the interest of public health and safety, all township council meetings have been virtual. We still have a virtual public portion at each meeting that allows all members of the public to speak. So no one is deprived of their right to speak. Is it now time to return to in-person township council meetings? That's a question. If we did, under the latest mandate, the five township council members, the township clerk, attorney, mayor, and its administrator and chief financial officer would take up the DIOS and the first two rows in the front. That would leave room for approximately 18 visitors. Any more than that, and we would have to cancel the meeting. I have no problem going back to public meetings. However, the council majority has opted to err on the site of caution and remain virtual for the month of October. If, in the meantime, the governor opens the state completely, the township council would immediately go back to public meetings. Now, there have been some comments on email that say, why don't we use the school auditoriums? My feedback uh, from the school board is we don't have permission to use the school district. They're concerned about spreading the virus in the schools. And if we were there, strangers were there in large numbers, they would have to disinfect everything, the men's room, the ladies' room, and all of the seats in the auditorium. They're not about to do that. Uh, also, it was suggested, why don't we uh, uh, hold them at the PAL? Similar concerns. And someone even suggested, why don't we have it outside in the football field? which I don't think would be a good venue for council meetings. So in any event, whenever the governor's restrictions are lifted, we will go back to public meetings happily. And that ends my two reports. Thank you, council president. Um, at this time, um, any member of council have anything to say under the township council presentation and reports? I just yes, like sorry. to make a... Uh... Okay, oh, sorry, oh. go ahead. Okay. Now, I just would like to make a statement that uh, I, too, have no problem uh, whatsoever going back to uh, regular meetings. Uh, you know, Mr. DePiro brings up a lot of good points um, for the reasons that we have not. But um, I just want to state for the record that, you know, I have no problem going back to regular meetings whenever uh, he deems it uh, appropriate. Thank you, Mr. Cariffi. Uh, any other member of council under uh, touch of council presentation and reports? Uh, Yes, I have a, a question, please. Uh, the um, ordinance, the emergency ordinance for the uh, payouts, uh, $631,671.94. Um, the amount, a fifth of that amount, $126 and change, that will be placed on the 2021 budget. A fifth of that amount, I, I, I'm hoping, and I believe that's what we've been doing um, previously. We did it in, we did it for 
2020, $61,187, the retirement payments for the $305,934 that we did an emergency payout also. My, my question, not only is the 126 for 2021, but we also, there is a chart that was given to us and it's still, there's an amount due of $514,572.74 that is still due. Is that amount, the fifth of that amount, is that also going to be placed on the 2021 budget? The next item that I'm, I'm concerned about is we recently had several law enforcement officers retire. I believe there were three within the past several months and weeks. Do we know what their monies will be that will be paid out to them? And are we also going to place that amount of money, a fifth of that amount of money on the 2021 budget? If I can get some answers to that, I would greatly appreciate it. I think that got addressed it if no one else is making any reference to it. I'm sorry? I think I can address it. I can address the, the question. Go ahead, uh, go ahead, uh, go ahead, uh, Mr. Uribe. Uh, Mr. Uribe will go ahead and address your questions at this particular point in time. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, to my understanding, the set up the planning of the payment of accumulated absence liabilities has been split the five years that special emergency notes allow. And uh, these payments provided in this ordinance are for, uh, have already been allocated in prior years. So in essence, I am not sure if this is the second or the third year of the amortization plan, but that's what it covers. It covers just one year. And yes, the amounts have to be raised as taxes in the following year's budget. Yes, I, I understand that. My other question is the monies that are still due to these officers. Um, I will not name them, but we have a list of their names and the amount is $514,572. Is that a fifth of that amount? Is that also going to be placed on the 2021 budget or we're not aware yeah. of that yet? Yeah, so if you look in your chart, you'll see the list. You'll see the names of two officers who are retiring this year, right after the special emergency, with the retirement date of of uh, February of this year and April of this year. Uh, the other gentleman uh, retired earlier this year from housing. But the other payments, so those are the ones that we have for this specific ordinance. Uh, Councilwoman, and then it will go on the subsequent budget for 21 and 21 uh, in, under the special emergency, as we've done for all the other ones in the past. So the, answer, the short answer is yes. My answer is 14, 514,000 hasn't been answered. What are we doing with that money that is still owed? Where, where do you get where do you get that number? I don't have that either in the special emergency that I have or the chart that was provided by me. One, I don't see the 514 that you're talking about. I, I uh, have them. I don't have the chart, but something I can explain is related to special emergency notes in this case. When uh, you provide a special emergency notes, it may cover two or three years in the past. I don't have uh, the specific breakdown of the years that the installment payments have been agreed upon. Uh, but in any case, I can tell you that uh, if the amount that is being requested in this ordinance is to cover only 2020, it should be raised as taxes in 2021. So whatever kind of amount that is outstanding will be raised in the following year budget via another emergency appropriation or via appropriation in the budget. If you ask me what is my preferred choice, It'll be appropriation in the budget, but sometimes you have to do it this way because there's not enough leeway within the budget to accommodate for that uh, those payouts. Thank you. You're very welcome. Okay, uh, any other member from the Township Council would like to say anything under Township Council reports? 
Going once, twice, okay. Uh, I have a uh, Colette. Okay, go ahead, Ms. McCarthy. Last week we talked about the uh, enforcing the plastic bag ban and we mentioned CDC rules. Um, well, I've since found out that the CDC provides no guidance to support stopping uh, the enforcement of plastic bag bans or restricts the use of reusable bags. So I just wanted to state that for the record because there was some confusion about what the CDC guidelines were. Um, it's also my understanding that, you know, the other municipalities uh, who have enacted plastic, uh, plastic bag bans have enforced them during the pandemic. I know that Madison just uh, implemented theirs on uh, March 1st of this year. And I think it was Milburn that passed theirs on June 1st. And I think as everyone knows, the state, legislator, the state legislators and bipartisan support um, passed the plastic ban. So, you know, it's my suggestion that maybe we send a letter or some communication to the retailers and grocers uh, to just let them know that this is in effect and they should be implementing the ban. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. McCarthy. Any other member of council? Uh, just in response to Ms. McCarthy, um, has the governor signed the plastic bag ban? I believe it's not. I believe that's on his desk for signature. I think he can sign it within the next 20 to 30 days. That would uh, would help a lot of stores that are concerned that if our town has a plastic ban and adjacent town does not, people will shop elsewhere. If it's statewide, then that takes the pressure off of a lot of uh, stores. Right. It would. Okay, any other member of council? Okay, uh, moving on to uh, township attorney. Um, I have three items on for closed session as indicated in the agenda. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Lott. Uh, moving on to the business administrator, uh, Fred Carr. Uh, thank you, Khalid. Uh, I just have two items. Uh, so, council, just to tell you that uh, we are still in the midst of our of our CFO transition with um, Juan being here Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, depending on our schedule. Uh, he was here all day on Tuesday, obviously, since we have a council meeting, uh, putting full days in. We have also have Ann here uh, on a part-time basis as we try to clean up our transition. Uh, I do know some of you expressed a concern that you know, we hired uh, Juan to be the CFO, but he's not fully here. But at the end of the day, uh, you don't leave another municipality in the lurch. It did take us a little while to choose the CFO and actually hire him. Uh, and until that time actually happened, he didn't provide notice to his outgoing municipality. And we do need to provide them, you know, at the end of the day, a professional courtesy, a transition. Uh, you just don't walk in and say, I appreciate it, and I'm gone. That's not the way it works. I'm hoping to have Ann out by the 21st of this month because then she'll be fully done and Juan will be fully as the CFO. Uh, that goes into my second bullet, which is our budget meeting start the 21st of October on Juan's first full, full day here in the township. We should have started these for all intents and purposes at the beginning of October. As we've done in years past or the end of September, but because of the transition, we're about three weeks behind I would what I would like, but we have a full schedule of that and should be done by the end of the month. Uh, and start putting our budget together in comparison of our last uh, last year's budget, what we need to do this year and weighing those shortness of the revenues, which is one of the conversations as the council president talked about. Uh, and I encourage the council to you know, ask questions, fully understand and vote for the uh, salary and the salary the water and sewer rate increase that's on second reading tonight on the agenda and to allow for the, the passing of the resolution which waives the estoppel period. And that concludes my report. Mr. Carr, B.A. Uh, Carr, uh, do we have any idea 
as to when the county will be uh, giving us the emergency reserve for our COVID, COVID expenses. Being the largest municipality in Morris County, I'm hoping we get a big chunk of uh, money. Um, yes, that would, so that would be the conversation, uh, the email exchange that I had yesterday with the county administrator uh, for the small price of $215,000. I will quit bugging him. Uh, <laughs> but right now, there is no mechanism at Morris County uh, because we missed the cutoff with regards to the size of the counties of a half a million in the governor's mandate for direct aid to, this, to the municipalities like in Essex County or Middlesex County where I left. Or frankly, uh, my contemporaries in those other counties have submitted their documentation to the county and have received the checks for their COVID expenses. And we in Parsippany, uh, we haven't gotten a dime. And right now I've asked the mayor to reach out uh, to the governor's office to say, hey, you know, and I've gone to the county numerous times saying, I don't care what your mechanism is. Choose a mechanism of your choice. When he's a FEMA one, when he uses, I don't care. Uh, we've got about $215,000 of, of documented COVID expenses that I can prove to them uh, as soon as they come up with a mechanism and I can get it there. So the short answer is no. Thank you, Mr. Carr. Um, <clears throat> Under Township Clerk, I do not have a report. Uh, moving along to Township Offices and Committees, anything? Okay, seeing nothing, we're gonna move along to the engineering report. I will go ahead and read the engineering report into the record at this time. 2020 road resurfacing, curb and sidewalk program. Construction is substantially complete and there are only punch list items still to be addressed. Work will be completed in October, no council action required. Green Bank Road Safety and Improvements Project. The project is substantially complete and only minor punch list items remain to be completed. A uh, section of new guide rail still needs to be installed once underground utilities are moved. Close out of the project is expected in October. No council action is required. Various streets reconstruction project. The various streets reconstruction project is complete. No council action required. New England Drive Million Paving Project. The New England Drive and Million Paving Project is substantially complete and only punch list items remain. All work will be completed in October. No council action required. Simpson Avenue Retaining Wall Project. The Simpson Avenue Retaining Wall Project construction is scheduled to start in a few weeks and will be completed in November. No council action required. Veterans Park Culvert Replacement Project. Bids were received for the Veterans Park Culvert Replacement Project and the pre-construction meeting has been scheduled. The concrete box culvert is to be ordered and construction will begin once a delivery date is identified. No council action required. Sheffield Street Drainage Project. We identified eight locations where significant deformation of the large diameter uh, corrugated metal drain pipe created blockages that reduced flow and contributed to the flooding through the rear yards along Sheffield Street. Repairs were made to the pipe and the rear yards were restored. Only minor punches items remain to be completed, no council action required. Mount Tabor Street Improvements uh, Phase 5. The Mount Tabor Street Improvements Phase 5 pre-construction meeting was held and work is anticipated to start at the end of October and continue to the end of the year, no council action required. Roadway design projects. The following projects are in design. Putting Stone Heights Road Improvements and the various culvert repair project. These projects will be bid once design documents are finalized. No council action required. Community rating system, CRS program. We continue to work with our consultant at the NJDEP to get back into the CRS program. This program provides discounts on flood insurance policies based on the level of activities in which the township participates. The work will continue through at least the end of this year. No council action required. Performance bond release. Tabor Lake, Block 18, Lot 7. All work associated with the major soil moving per permit at Tabor Lake has been satisfactorily completed. This office has no objection to the release of the performance bond number B1057940. A resolution will need to be adopted by the Township Council. Performance bond release, Cagniano Orthodontics, Block 393, Lot 1. The developer completed all site work in accordance with the approved plans. Inspections were made during the course of construction, and this office has no objection to the release of the performance bond number S314648. A resolution will need to be adopted by the Township Council. Fox Run Developers, LLC, Performance Guarantee Reduction, Block 98, Lot 22. The developer has requested a reduction of the performance guarantee to reflect site work completed on the project. Inspections conducted by this office reveal that a reduction is warranted and work associated with the performance guarantee reduction has been satisfactorily completed and is in accordance with the approved plans. This office has no objection to the approval of the reduction to the standby letter of credit, reference number 961-SB to the new amount of $78,240. A resolution will need to be adopted by the Township Council. 
700 Mountain Way, LLC, performance guarantee reduction, block 14, lot nine. The developer has requested a reduction of the performance guarantee to reflect site work completed on the project. Inspections conducted by this office reveal that a reduction is warranted and work associated with the performance guarantee reduction has been satisfactorily completed as in accordance with the approved plans. This office has no objection to the approval of the reduction to the standby letter of credit reference number 11107-SB to the new amount of $211,022. A resolution will need to be adopted by the Township Council. Water's Edge Persephone LLC Performance Guarantee Reduction, Block 450, Lot 14. The developer has requested a reduction of the performance guarantee to reflect site work completed on the project. Inspections conducted by this office reveal that a reduction is warranted and work associated with the performance guarantee reduction has been satisfactorily completed and is in accordance with the approved plans. This office has no objection to the approval of the reduction to the standby letter of credit, reference number OD 0D. 16002238 to the new amount of $277,541. A resolution will need to be adopted by the Township Council. Moving on to bids taken September 16th, 2020 Klondike Booster Station upgrades to be taken September 1st, 2020 Yard Waste Transportation and Disposal Recycling, September 7th, 2020 Third Party Billing for Ambulance Services for EMS. September 15th, 2020, scatter system improvements, phase two. September 21, 2020, well drilling and installation services replacement, production well, 21. Uh, it's it's October dates, not September. Oh, I apologize. I'm just moving right along. Thank you for catching that. Thank you for catching that. So just replace all the September with October dates. I'm not going to go over those again, um, unless you want me to, Council President. Not necessary. All right, thank you. <laughs> Um, moving along to the public hearing. Uh, before I start the public hearing, I want to let the public know that if you have any comments that pertain to the water or sewer, please be advised that we do have a public hearing coming up. And I ask that you reserve all your comments for the public hearing on the water and sewer ordinance. Other than that, if you have any other comments, you can go ahead and speak to them at the public hearing. Uh, with that being said, I'd like to entertain a motion to open up the public hearing. Make a motion. Second. Okay, made a motion made by Mr. Cariffi, seconded by Ms. Peterson. Roll call, Mr. Cariffi. Yes. Ms. Guignani? Yes. Ms. McCarthy? Yes. Ms. Peterson? Yes. Mr. DePiro? Yes. Okay, uh, now at this time, I'm going to go ahead and uh, ask the public uh, to raise your hands. You will have five minutes to speak on any subject other than the water and sewer, as previously mentioned. After the five minutes, the council will then address your questions. This will not be a debate back and forth. Okay, so with that being said, let's go ahead and take a look at the list. At this time, I see uh, Mr. Nick Homiak. Uh, so let's go ahead and unmute Nick, please. Can you hear me? Hey, Nick, how are you? Okay. Um. I wondered if uh, I mentioned this before at the council and I called cutting the grass and leaving the trash. It's a common phenomenon. It happens all over the place, but we have to start changing this behavior. You should have seen the mess at the end of no road on this Friday. Someone cut the grass. It, I had to be a municipal worker. Big piece of styrofoam could have picked it up. What does he do? Cuts it with the lawnmower, spreads it all over the place. It was, uh, you know, it took a while to clean up, and and uh, it's just, it shouldn't be. I recently had a conversation with the administrator in uh, Booton, because when I was down the knoll doing litter abatement, I saw them doing the same thing. They're cutting the grass and leaving the trash. It happens on county, state, and levels. We need some kind of a intergovernmental mayor's conference or something about discipline in the workforce. And in my opinion, the municipal worker who left that mess on Noel Avenue, he should suffer some type of discipline. And it's not the first time I've seen evidence where they're just not doing what they should do. You wouldn't do it on your own lawn or your own property. And when he's working for the town, that's our lawn. That's our habitat. And to do that is just not right. And there should be some, some uh, reprimand. And that really upset me. Uh, when you submit a reported concern, 
and you get the reply, it says successfully resolved. I think they should start telling you how it was successfully resolved. And certain concerns are ongoing. So if you're just doing it one time, it's going to happen again. You got to be proactive. We, we have these people, we're giving them good money. They got to get out there and start looking around what's going on, especially the, the, the sanitation. But uh, I'll, leave, uh, I'll leave it at that, and uh, I'll save my comments, uh, like Holly said, uh, when the water uh, comes up. Thank you, Nick. Um, all right, at this time, I see Mr. Walter uh, Wellens. Let's go ahead and please unmute Walter. Walter, are you there? Walter? Hey, Walter, are you there? Okay, you, you have been unmuted, Walter. Okay, Walter, uh, we have unmuted you on our end. But it doesn't seem like we can hear you at this point. Okay, we'll give you about 30 seconds to see if you're able to figure out what's going on on your end. Okay, Walter, you there? Okay, let's see in the meantime if there's anybody else. You're still unmuted, by the way, Walter. Okay, we don't have anyone else, so we'll have to give, uh, Walter, we'll have to give you about 15 more seconds. And uh, if uh, we, can't, we can't hear you, we're going to have to mute you and move on. Maybe Nick can offer some advice. No, we can't unmute Nick at this time. Because we can't have more than one person talking. There he is. He's unmuted again, Walter. Okay, we're going to have to move on. Walter, uh, if you can hear me, if you have any comments you'd like to speak about, you can go ahead and uh, email me at uh, kmadden at parsippany.net, and we can go ahead and see if we can get your comments out there, okay? At this time, we'll go ahead and have to um, move on. Let's look and see if there's anyone else whose hand is up. Okay, seeing no one else at this time, I'd like to entertain a motion to close the public hearing. Motion. Motion made by Ms. Peterson. Second, Grignani. Okay, seconded by Ms. Grignani. Roll call, Mr. Cariffi. Yes. Ms. Gr Ms. Grignani. Yes. Ms. McCarthy. Yes. Ms. Peterson? Yes. Mr. DePiro? Yes. Okay, the uh, public hearing portion is closed. Moving along to ordinances. For introduction, we have the one ordinance with regards to the payout. Just I ask you to review that, then we'll move on to the second reading and public hearing.
Okay, seeing that we have no questions, we're going to move along now to the uh, second reading in public hearing. This is for ordinance 2020 colon 28 amending and supplementing chapter 329 sewers to increase sewer rates and charges and ordinance 2020 colon 29 amending and supplementing chapter 420 water to increase water rates and charges. The notices for the ordinances above were published in the daily record, the official newspaper of the township of Precipitate Troy Hills on September 22nd, 2020. The ordinances were introduced at the December 15th meeting, 2020 regular meeting. I'd like a motion to accept the ordinances 2020 colon 28 and 2020 colon 29 be heard in their second following readings by title only. Motion. May I have a second, please? Second. Okay, we have a motion made by um, <clears throat> Ms. Peterson, seconded by Ms. McCarthy. Roll call, Mr. Cariffi? Yes. Ms. Guignani? Yes. Ms. McCarthy? Yes. Ms. Peterson? Yes. And Mr. DePiro? Yes. Okay, now we have the public hearing for uh, ordinance number 2020 colon 28 and ordinance number 2020 colon 29. Motion to open up the public hearing for the above ordinances, please. Make a motion. Second. Motion made by Mr. Cariffi, seconded by Ms. Peterson. Roll call, Mr. Cariffi? Yes. Ms. Grignani? Yes. Ms. McCarthy? Yes. Peterson? Yes. And Mr. DePiro? Yes. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and look at the public participants. Again, uh, for the public, I just want to um, state that uh, you uh, may speak only on the water and sewer ordinances at this time. So with that being said, I see that we have uh, Bob and Pat Venezia's up. Let's go ahead and please unmute Bob and Pat Venezia. Can you hear me? Hey, Bob, yes, we can hear you. Okay. Um, I believe that the uh, Bob Venezia 102 Brooklawn Drive. Um, I believe that these ordinances as written require improvements in several areas before the council votes on them for adoption. These areas include transparency, clarifying wording that deals with rate effective date and reducing the proposed rates to just what is necessary. Regarding transparency, I don't see how the public can comment on rate increases when the amount of rate increase is not even specified on the ordinance summaries that appear in the council agenda meeting. The ordinance summary should be clearly stated that there will be a 39% increase across the board for both utilities. A rate increase of that, of that magnitude will surely generate a lot more feedback than a standard 2% increase. In addition, the full te text of the ordinances mentions several reasons why the utility rate increases are necessary. But perhaps the biggest reason is conspicuously absent, although Mr. DiPiero Di did mention them earlier. Uh, in the ordinance, there's no mention of the almost $18 million that has been transferred from the utility budgets to the general budget of, over the last 10 years. I think that the public would also like to know that this 39% proposed rate increase does nothing to eliminate these transfers. Next. I think that the wording which says that the ordinance will take place immediately upon final passage needs to be more precise. Specifically, the wording needs to describe what will happen when part of the quarterly bill is for usage at the old rate and part at the new rate. If the entire bill will be charged retroactively at the new rate, the ordinance should make that clear. Otherwise, you might get a lot of requests for refunds. Lastly, and most importantly, I believe that a 39% rate increase is excessive based on the revenue that needs to be raised. To illustrate this point, $3.4 million must be withdrawn from the sewer utility fund in order to make ends meet in the 2020 sewer budget. However, if a 39% rate increase is enacted, the sewer fees will increase by $5.6 million annually. This $5.6 million is enough to cover the $3.4 million that is currently being withdrawn from the fund balance, with $2 million left over. When the 39% rate increase was originally proposed by the utility consultant, at least two members of the council objected to the size of the increase. 
Well, your initial reaction was warranted and is supported by the numbers. The council should scale down the size of the rate increase to an amount that is just sufficient to cover the fund balance withdraws, plus maybe a little extra to cover contingencies. So before you vote on the current ver version of ordinance 2020-28 and 2020-29, I ask that you consider my suggestions and amend the ordinances accordingly. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Bob. Uh, any uh, any comments or responses from the council or administration on this? Okay, seeing none, moving along to, uh, I think we see here, uh, Nick Homiak. So let's go ahead and unmute Nick. Okay. Uh, I'm the prior uh, tax increase that was proposed by Ann Cucci the four dollars and thirty two cents average, and I believe that was to amend the uh, or to pay for the present water infrastructure failures that we have now. And my increase, for example, on my bill will be about eight dollars more a month as compared to it would have been four dollars and thirty two cents or even less. So which method was more equitable and are are these two uh, proposals the the past tax and uh, this uh, new rate are are they actually one in the same? And uh, I would think that the increase overall is really not that great when you think that you know water is life and and you do need it and we're not getting any money from any other sources. It goes to, you know, Space Force or something like that, but it's not going to uh, to the water here uh, infrastructure for our uh, United States of America. But um, I don't know if uh, if you can answer that question, but I would appreciate it. And one more thing, <clears throat> tell me if I'm wrong about this. Uh, minimum users, but in the summertime, your sewer rates go up. They don't stay the same. So, what is the cause of that? If you're if you're staying within the minimum water use, why isn't your water and sewer bill always the same? Why does it increase? And I'm under the impression that we're splitting the overall bill with everybody. Uh, is that is there any truth to that, or am I just uh, imagining things? Nick, I, this is Fred. I would never say that the resident is imagining things, uh, but perhaps you're looking at it wrong. Um, so the tax increase has nothing to do with the sewer and the water rates. The sewer and the water systems are self-funded utilities. Their rates must support those utilities in and of themselves. Okay? All right. It's based on your usage. What right. goes to I gotta tell everybody to make this simple, whatever flows through the meter is what is is what is charged to the resident. Your rates are based on two items, your base rate. The base rate, again, for you and everyone else, is what it costs for the system physically in the ground, the pipes, the sewer plant, the insurance, the debt service. Mm -hmm. If nothing flows at all through the water or the sewer system, there is that base rate, the cost of doing business, of having it available. And then there's the usage rate, which is a separate rate, which is based on your meter flow. So when they talk about the average municipal user in Parsippany, they're talking about a, a family or an individual or a billing person who uses about 12,000 gallons of water in a quarter. That's an average. So if your house and you sit there and go, we don't use 12,000 gallons of water. Well, I can assure you that there is somebody else because that's the way average works using more. 
Uh, and so that's how the rates are rates are determined for the minimum user. So when we talk about the minimum user, same on your tax rate, when we talk about the average rate for the average assessed value for the city of, or the township of part of the it just talks about that base rate. So it's some kind of a metric, and then you have to compare yourself to that metric to see what you will actually pay. Mm -hmm. And in response to the previous gentleman's conversation about uh, upon final passage needs to, for instance, be clearly defined. We can't tell you what that date is because until such time as the council passes the ordinance and it's published in a newspaper, we can't tell you what that is. Okay, and more importantly, that language is set by statute. We're not, we don't make this up. That's right out of the law. It says upon fact, we're hoping. I am asking that the council pass this and that. Uh, the clerk publishes as soon as possible, and the rates will take place for all intents and purposes on Tuesday, uh, 13th of October, when the billing cycle and the bills start going out. Yeah. Could I, I ask one more? Is there a threshold in the sewer and water surplus that is a maximum that it can't go beyond? No. So the water. So this money is in trust for uh, forever for for water infrastructure. Correct. So what should happen, Nick, as the council president talks about, is that every year during the budget conversation in the fall, like right now, council and the administration has a conversation about the budget and the water rates and the tax rates and what we're going to do next year. And if we evaluate the water and the sewer rates and say we're not going to raise them, Okay, that's a decision. Mm -hmm. Or we're going to leave them the same or whatever. We need to have that discussion for the viability of the system. Trust me, next year we're going to be having this conversation. We may not raise the rates. We may, we're not going to lower them because I'm going to have to throw myself on somebody's table if we do. But you know, we have to have that evaluation to say, are we paying our bills? Now, with regards to transferring, money from the sewer utility and the water utility that's a council conversation i believe uh, in previous conversations many of the council members have expressed a concern and we're working very diligently to wean ourselves from that use of those monies in the current fund thank you uh fred and uh, thank you nick uh with that uh let's see if there's anyone else here with their hands up Okay, I uh, don't see anyone else. So with that being said, we're going to move along. I'd like to entertain a motion to close the public hearing. Make a motion. Second. Motion made by Mr. Cariffi, seconded by Ms. Peterson. Roll call, Mr. Cariffi. Yeah. Ms. Guignani. Yes. Ms. McCarthy. Yes. Ms. Peterson. Yes. Yeah, Ms. Peterson and Mr. DePiro. Mr. DePiro? Council President. Looks like he's got a little yellow bar up there. I don't know. I think that means he's okay. Okay, so we have uh, we have the votes. Uh, whereas, um, so the public hearing has been closed. Whereas the above ordinances were read in title on second reading and a hearing held thereon. Now, therefore, be it resolved that said ordinances be passed on final reading and that notice of final passage of said ordinances be published in a newspaper according to law. Motion to approve the resolution above. Motion. Second. Second. Okay, I have a motion made by Ms. Peterson, seconded by Ms. McCarthy. Roll call, Mr. Cariffi. Yes. Ms. Grignani? Yes. Ms. McCarthy? Yes. Ms. Peterson? Yes. Mr. DePiro? Okay, Mr. DePiro, um, looks like you might have had a bad connection there. All right, we have four votes, uh, so uh, the uh, motion passes to pass the resolution at this time. Uh, again, now we're moving along to ordinance 2020 column 27. There is no action on this ordinance, so I just ask the council to quickly review it before we move on to the non-consent agenda.
Okay, moving along to the non-consent agenda. Uh, resolutions are 2020-182, finding and declaring an emergency for the purposes of authorizing the immediate enactment of ordinances 2020-28 and 2020-29, pursuant to NJSA 40-69A-181. Can I please have a motion for the above resolution? Motion. Thank you. Okay, we have a motion made by uh, Ms. Peterson, seconded by Mr. Kirby. Uh, any discussion on this? Okay, no discussion. Uh, I just want to say that I don't think anyone on challenge needs to increase these rates unless uh, unless it was necessary for the town's financial stability going forward. And uh, this is what the consultant study um, came up with. And um, I think, you know, it's, it's a sound financial uh, practice to do this. Yes. Are we voting now or just comment? Uh, not yet, Ms. McCarthy, but thank you for your comment. Any other comments on the under the discussion portion of this? I just got knocked off. My computer went blank. I just signed in again. Did I miss anything? We were, we were about to shut down the meeting. Ah. <laughs> no, we we just passed uh, the ordinance on uh, colon 2028 and 2029. And we are now moving along to the non-consent agenda. We're under the first resolution declaring an emergency for the purpose of authorizing the immediate enactment of those ordinances. And we're on the discussion. We've had a motion and a second, and we're on discussion. The clerk, before we vote on that, you should offer the council president the opportunity to vote on oranges 28 and 29, because he was knocked off um, electronically. Thank you, Mr. Lott. Um, Mr. DiPiero, what is uh, your vote on uh, the... Um, Ordinance number 2028 and 2029. We had a motion made by uh, Ms. Peterson and uh, second by Ms. McCarthy uh, with a roll call with all four council members answering yes. How would you like to vote on both ordinances? Yes. Okay, thank you, Mr. DePiro. We'll put that in for the record. And thank, thank you, Mr. Lott. Lott. I wasn't checking out. My computer never did that before. It just turned off. <laughs> no, no problem. It's the hazards of the electronic age. That is correct. That is correct. Um, so now, uh, Mr. DePiro, we're under the discussion portion of the first resolution that is declaring an emergency for the purpose of the immediate enactment of ordinance number 2028 and 2029. Um, and we've had a discussion. Would you like to offer any discussion under that ordinance, under that resolution? I apologize. Not really. Okay, perfect. So we had a motion by Ms. Peterson, a second by Mr. Cariffi. We're going to go into the call, Mr. Cariffi. Mr. Cariffi? Yes. Ms. Grignani? Yes. Ms. McCarthy? Yes. Ms. Peterson? Yes. Mr. DePiro? Yes. Okay, motion passes. Moving along to R2020-183. Okay, now before uh, I begin this, uh, we're going to ask Ms. Dolan just to, to be available because under the discussion portion, we probably will need her comments. Uh, so R2020-183, resolution determining the form and other details of uh, 14,745,000 general obligation bonds series 2020 consistent of 13,045,000 general improvement bonds and 1.7 million golf and recreation utility bonds of the township of Precipity Troy Hills in the County of Morris, New Jersey and providing for their sale. Need a motion? May I please have a motion? Motion. Second. Okay, we have a motion by Ms. Peterson and a second by Mr. Cariffi. Uh, any discussion on this? Okay, no discussion. Okay, so without any discussion, we're going to move along to the roll call. Mr. Cariffi? Yes. Ms. Grignani? Yes. Ms. McCarthy? Yes. Ms. Peterson? Yes. Mr. DePiro? I thought we were going to have uh, Valerie make a comment first. Well, I was waiting for someone to jump in and say, you know, so we could cue her in, but okay, we can have a uh, Valerie. Are you there? That should be before the roll call. Yep, I'm here. I wasn't sure when you wanted me to jump on, so. <laughs> Perfect. I was waiting to see the council president when he wanted this, but we can go on now. Okay. Um, you have bond anticipation notes that are scheduled to come due. And what myself, bond council, your um, financial advisor, your administration, we looked at those we looked at those notes that were coming due and we looked at the debt that you've authorized and not issued debt on. And so we looked at it and we've structured a deal that really comes through with issuing some bonds 
in both the in the general capital and in the golf and recreation and then in the utilities we have we have notes that are going to end up going also so this is really for the bond sale we need to have these resolutions passed so that we can then advertise those bonds so that we can then prepare and finalize the official statement and get the bond sale our goal is to try to have the sale by uh, the end of this month if possible while the rates are advantageous to the disc to the township that's the bottom line right valerie the rates are the rates are an advantageous time to take advantage of them yes okay thank you yep now you, you had the roll call for everybody except me well we have the roll call for everyone except you yes that is correct so go ahead mr DePiro. what's your vote yes Okay, good. Um, all right, so motion passes. Moving along to R202184, resolution providing for the combination of certain issues of general improvement bonds of the township for Sipity Troy Hills and the county of Morris, New Jersey, into a single issue of bonds aggregating $13,045,000 in principal amount. You know, motion, please. Motion. Second. Motion made by uh, Ms. Grignani, seconded by Ms. Peterson. Any discussion? Okay. See none. Oh, Riffy. Yes. Ms. Pignani? Yes. Ms. McCarthy? Yes. Ms. Peterson? Yes. Mr. DePiro? Yes. Motion passes. Moving along to R2020-185. Resolution providing for the combination of certain issues of law and recreation utility bonds of the township for Sipri Troy Mills and the county of Morris, New Jersey, into a single issue of bonds aggregating $1.7 in principal amount. And please have a motion. Motion. Second. Motion made by Ms. Peterson, seconded by Ms. McCarthy. Roll call, Mr. Car uh, well, actually, sorry, discussion. Seems done. Uh, roll call, Mr. Cariffi. Yes. Ms. Mignani? Yes. Ms. McCarthy? Yes. Ms. Peterson? Yes. And Mr. DePiro? Yes. Motion passes. At this time, we're moving over to the consent agenda. I'd ask you to please review that. Uh, and if you have any questions or concerns, uh, please uh, let, let us know now. Okay, seeing none, we're going to be moving along to the approval of the uh, payroll and bills list. Uh, CFO Ancucci recommends authorization for payment. One, authorizes payment of the uh, October 2nd, 2020 regular payroll estimated at 1.6 million each and payment of bills from voucher list of October 1st, 2020 through October 3rd, estimate totaling $1,820,846.42. Can I please have a motion? Make a motion. Okay, motion made by Mr. Kofi, second by Ms. McCarthy. Roll call, Mr. Cariffi? Yes. Ms. Grignani? Yes. Ms. McCarthy? Yes. Ms. Peterson? Yes. Mr. DePiro? Yes. Okay. At this time, we're going to go ahead and go into the executive session. I'm going to go ahead and um, read the executive session resolution. Before I read the executive session resolution, I'd like to let the public know that we do not anticipate any action at this time. And once we move into executive session, you will be cut off. So um, thank you for participating. And we'll, if you decide to stay, we'll see you after for the adjournment. Uh, going again, executive session resolution, whereas the Open Public Meetings Act, PL 1975, Chapter 231, permits the exclusion of the public from a meeting in certain circumstances, and whereas the Township Council is of the opinion that such circumstances presently exist, and whereas the Township Council wishes to discuss attorney client privileged information, State Alcoholic Beverage Commission, Hotel Liquor License Regulations, Dash Par Miller's Ale House, Acquisition of Property, Stormwater Drainage Easement, Corvelli, 750 Edwards Road, Block 76, Lot 6, and potential litigation estate of John Montefusco. And whereas minutes will be kept, and once the matter involving the confidentiality of the above no longer requires confidentiality, the minutes will be made public. Now, therefore, uh, be it resolved by the Township Council of the Township for Sipping Troy Hills that the public be excluded from this meeting. May I please have a motion to adjourn into closed session? Make a motion. Second. Motion made by Mr. Carippi, seconded by Ms. Peterson. Roll call, Mr. Carippi. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Ms. McCarthy. Yes. Ms. Peterson? Yes. Mr. DePiro? Yes. Okay, at this time, if we can please adjourn into closed session, you'll know we're in closed session when the uh, color changes in the, in the window.
need a motion. Okay, we're back in open session. Can I please have a motion to reconvene into open session, please? Make a motion. Second. Motion made by Mr. Carippi, seconded by Ms. Peterson. Roll call, Mr. Carippi? Yes. Ms. Grignani? Yes. Ms. McCarthy? Yes. Ms. Peterson? Yes. Mr. DePiro? Yes. Okay, we're back into open session. Could I please have a motion to adjourn the meeting? Make a motion. Second. Motion made by Mr. Carippi, seconded by Ms. Grignani. Roll call, Mr. Carippi? Yes. Ms. Grignani? Yes. Ms. McCarthy? Yes. Ms. Peterson? Yes. Mr. DePiro? Yes. Okay, we are adjourned. Thank you, everybody, and everybody have a good night. Have a good, good night. Good night.